How y'all doing tonight? Good. Didn't sound like it. Let's try that again on three. One, two, three. Good. All right, good to be with you. My name is Martin Britt. I'm pastor at Parkway Baptist Church. Some of my people came to see you tonight. Why don't y'all stand up and let everybody give you a hand. See, y'all don't know, but this is a miracle over here. See, Parkway for years has been a senior church. That means everybody that goes there is at least 50. Get it? Y'all get it. That's what we call seniors, right? Well, the Lord's been working. And we appreciate y'all's prayers, if you don't mind praying for us. But, but God is trying to do a move in Pascagoula, Mississippi. And Parkway, we want to be on the edge of it. And y'all be praying because we want to start a Shays Place in Pascagoula. And we want to get up in the schools. And uh, Brother Terry mentioned earlier, we are making a DVD of this. Now let me tell you why we're doing that. It's actually so that students can give out the DVD at schools. You see, most people don't realize this, but Christian teenagers, on the average, 70% of them lose their faith in the Bible by the time they finish college. And does anybody know why they lose their faith in school? What do they teach in school that destroys people's faith in the Word of God? False religion. False religion? Evolution. Evolution. Evolution, yeah. Most people don't realize evolution is a religion. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give you some facts tonight about evolution. And in fact, this, the title of what we're going to be talking about tonight is Evolution, Fact or Fiction. And that way, you'll have some facts in your corner you can talk to some people about. So when somebody comes up there and says, Hey, Eli, you, you don't really believe the Bible, do you? You can say, yes, I do, because it is the Word of God, and it is more science than evolution. So, tonight's lesson is called, In the Beginning, What? Because you got to believe in something. Either everything came from nothing, or everything came from God. Who votes that everything came from God? Wow, we got a majority tonight. Good. Good. Some crowds, you never know what to expect. You know, they look at you like you're crazy when you say God made the earth and the heavens and all that are in them. So this is a real important subject because faith is on the line. How many of y'all seen the movie God's Not Dead? Isn't that crazy, that young man standing up like that? What's really cool is if you watch at the end of the movie, you'll see hundreds of young people that have been standing for their faith in school. See, God's trying to do a final harvest in the world. He's going to try to gather in as many young people as he can before the final thing comes because the final thing is what we call the Big Bang. We'll talk about that later. In Christianity, we do believe in the Big Bang, but it comes at the end, not at the beginning of history. We're going to answer some questions tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Be diligent or study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing or rightly being able to sort out the Word of God. That means if somebody quotes a scripture like we just heard earlier, some of the best scriptures in the Bible there in Colossians, we need to be able to say, okay, this is what this means, this is what that means, this is what that means. Because believe it or not, most of the people out there that you're going to be going to school with are not saved. They're lost. And they need what lives in you if you're born again. You have the Holy Spirit of God, and that's what they need. In fact, if they had what you have, it would change the course of history. Because most young people today that are cutting themselves and committing suicide and doing all the crazy stuff are doing it because they've been taught that they're nothing but an animal. I went to the Ocean Springs Middle School today to, teach, to pray at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And the teacher said, she said, we're so glad you're here. She says, these schools are starting to get so crazy. Kids are acting like animals. I said, ma'am, it's your fault. You're teaching them that they have a common ancestry with the earthworm. I read that in a, in a textbook one time. Humans and earthworm have a common ancestry. If you teach someone that they come from an from a earthworm, they're not going to have any reason to hope. Back when I was in school, back in the 19... <laughs> It was do what we say, follow the rules, because God's watching. Now, y'all don't get mad. I went to D'Iberville High School, okay? Don't throw nothing up here. Thank, thank you for not booing. But, you know, when I was in school, the principal prayed before school started. They just don't hardly do that anymore. But I've heard they do that in some in Van Cleve up here. Man, you know, y'all are, are not quite overrun yet. Y'all got my man Ethan, some of them going on up here. 
So he says we need to be ready also, 1 Peter 3.15, we need to be ready to give people an answer. So people say, well, why, why are you studying all this science stuff? You know what? Science has never even been my big thing. I'm a big into history. But the reason why I study science is because I want to be able to give people an answer. See, I was teaching at the Home of Grace one day, and this guy got done with my class, and he said, you know, I went to the University of New Orleans for two and a half years to study biology, and you just destroyed everything I learned in two and a half years in biology class. I said, no, sir, I didn't destroy anything you learned of good science. What they did is they added a little junk in there called evolution. You take the evolution out, and you just leave the good science. You learned a lot of good stuff. So we need to be ready to give answers. Colossians 2, 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and in, 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 deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. So we need to be very careful that people don't rob us by teaching us stuff that the world has accepted as true, but it's not real science. It's not true. You take this guy right here. You know, you've got a lot of smart people out in the world that are good examples for you. You know, Brother Terry's a good example. He teaches you a lot of good stuff. But you know what? Check out everything he says. You know, here he is telling Hagen, you know, this coffee is hot. It's been sitting here for hundreds of years. Of course, Hagen's like, what? Yeah, I, I told you we'd make you look good in there, Brother Terry. Yeah, yeah. Look, Brother Terry's a great man, but if he tells you the coffee's 100 years old, don't believe it. And if your teacher tells you the world is millions of years old, be very polite and just say, you know what, in my religion, we don't believe that. So sometimes you just got to be honest with, with smart people. And when you see that they're wrong, you just have to say, hey, we don't believe that way. If you got the test there in front of you and she says, how old is the earth? The textbook says it's 20 billion years old, but I don't believe that. I believe the Bible. It's okay to answer like that. Just give them the answer they want and then just tell them what you believe. And that's what 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21 says. He says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Uh, some things are being taught as science and they simply are not real science. 70% of Christian students lose their faith that the Bible is true by the end of college. We saw a good example of that in God's Not Dead. That's, that kind of stuff happens all over the country all the time. So let's see if the stuff they're claiming really is proven scientifically. But first, there are basically four great questions in life. No matter what you believe, there are four great questions. The first one is, who am I? The second one is, where did I come from? The third one is, why am I here? And the fourth one is, where am I going when I die? Those are what are called the four great questions of life. And based on your beliefs, you will answer those four questions. For example, in evolution, who am I is very simple. You're not important. You're an accident. Billions of years ago, a bunch of accidental chem combinations of chemicals got together and they made a living organism. You know, one of my friends was telling me that one day and I'm like, really? I said, have you ever put a frog in a blender? <laughs> Y'all haven't done that, have you? <laughs> you know, you can take a frog and put him in a blender, and a frog is a, is a life form, but if you turn that blender on with the frog in there, you're going to hear, and then you're going to have no frog. But you're going to have a big pulpy mess in there. <laughs> no frogs were actually harmed during this experiment, okay? But you know what? You still have the same chemicals as you would have if you had life, but you have no life. And you can add all kinds of energy in there and you'll never have life in there. So I don't, know, I don't know how they think that an accidental combination of chemicals would eventually make certain compounds into life. It just doesn't happen. But if there is no God, you know what? You're nobody. Go ahead, kill yourself. It doesn't mean anything. And that's why teen suicides have skyrocketed since they started teaching evolution in the schools. Where did I come from? Well, if evolution is true, you came from a cosmic explosion that happened billions of years ago. Why am I here? Well, if evolution is true, there's no reason for you being here. In fact, you're part of the problem. We need to get rid of some humans. Get them off the earth. They're polluting the earth. Where am I going when I die? Well, if evolution is true, you're just going to be recycled into a plant or something. But if the Bible is true, there's a whole different set of answers to these questions. Who am I? Well, you're somebody that God created for His purpose, His honor, and His glory. And every single person in here has a specific purpose and call. In fact, it's exciting being back at 412 Generation, Brother Terry. 
Because I, I get to see the people that were here two and three years ago when I was here on Facebook. Man, they're out going to college and growing and changing the world and touching lives. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing to realize what one Christian man or one Christian young woman can do. You have a purpose. You have a call. Why am I here? I have a purpose. Where am I going when I die? Well, you're going to live forever. You're going to live eternally with Jesus Christ if the Bible is true. If you don't know Him, then you're going to live eternally apart from Him in a place of torment. And that's not necessary. Evolutionist Sir Arthur said it well. He said, the law of Christ is incompatible with the law of evolution. No, the two laws are at war with each other. So evolution is at war with Jesus Christ. So I hope you are a warrior for Christ and you're willing to stand up against this false teaching while at the same time being polite to your teachers and stuff. I know the last time I was here a couple of years ago and taught on this, I had a little disturbance over at Van Cleef School. You know, students were like, well, teacher, you know, be a little nice to them. Sometimes they get brainwashed and they don't know what they're talking about. It's funny, though, the media throws it out like uh, it's a war between religion and science. Religious and science leaders debate evolution. You know, they always want to make it look like one of them is a religion, but the other one is science. But the truth is, evolution is a religion just like Christianity is a religion. For example, science is things we know to be true, things we can observe and test, things that are clearly proven by natural laws. It's knowledge. In other words, science is something I can actually show you, you can actually test it, you can actually see it happening. That's science. And that's a very important fact because evolution is not science, it's religion. Let me show you why. Religion is things we believe to be true. An evolution thinker can believe that the earth is, is 20 billion years old or, or that the Big Bang occurred 20 billion years ago, but there's no scientific proof for it. In fact, who was here 20 billion years ago? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody that's alive now. Things that cannot necessarily be visibly observed or tested. I believe in my religion that earlier when we were praising the Lord that the Holy Spirit was moving through our midst. And the Holy Spirit began to stir some of us to praise the Lord, right? We believe the Holy Spirit is real. But we can't show you the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He says, you know what? You see the wind. He said, you feel the wind. I mean, you can't see the wind, but you feel the wind, but it's there. He said, so is everyone that's born of the Spirit. So I can't show you Jesus Christ. I can show you changed lives. I can show you that He makes my life have meaning, but Jesus Christ is my religion. He is my system of beliefs. The problem is, you got the same thing with evolution. Evolution is just a series of beliefs. That's all it is. There's no way to scientifically prove it. In fact, I was talking to an evolutionist one day, and uh, he, he made this comment. He said, he said, you know, you Christians are religious fanatics, man. You've got you to have all kinds of faith to believe the Bible. I said, no, it takes a lot more faith to believe that all everything you see around you used to be squeezed into a dot tinier than a period. Can you imagine that? Squeeze everything that you see around you into a dot tinier than a period. You think you could squeeze that chair under you into the dot tiny in a period? No, you don't think so? It couldn't happen, could it? No, but that's what an evolutionist believes. They believe everything around us was squeezed into a dot tinier than a period, and then it started spinning and it exploded. That takes a lot of faith. You know what was funny is the guy turned around to me and he said, he said, well, I've got to tell you, preacher, I've dedicated my life to proving evolution is true. I said, so you've dedicated your life to proving that your life has no point, no reason, and no purpose. Good luck with that. And he looked at me and goes, but what if you're wrong? I said, man, you know what? If I'm wrong, I've lost nothing. If I'm wrong, I've, I've deceived a bunch of people into believing there's hope in Jesus Christ and they've lived a good life and they've raised kids and they've enjoyed their life and they've had purpose in life and they and me, we're going to die and there's going to be nothing and it won't matter anyway if I'm wrong. I've got nothing to lose. I said, but if you're wrong, you're going to hell like a bullet, my friend. they got everything to lose. we got nothing to lose with believing in Jesus Christ. Nothing. This is what we call the humanist worldview here. Amazing, a big bang made this world from nothing. That's the humanist worldview that, that 
it's based on evolution. Man is God. He answers to no one. What we have is the creationist worldview that God is God and judges all men. Both look at the same world. One says, it's amazing, a big bang made this out of nothing. The Christian looks at it and said, incredible design, there must be a smart designer. Anybody like Lee Strobel and all these big atheist scientists over the years, when they look at science and really look at science, there's no way they can't believe there's a creator. If you look close enough at science, you'll have to believe there's a creator. It's just too complicated in its design. But they call us religious fanatics because we believe in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But to me, it takes a lot more religious fanaticism to believe that 20 billion years ago there was nothing. There was no time, there was no space, and there was no matter. From this state of nothingness, time and space just sprung forth. And I'm talking to the evolutionists. I'm like, okay, you're telling me 20 billion years ago there was nothing. He's like, yeah, yeah, well, it's obvious. I'm like, how is it obvious? And, and time and space just came out of nowhere. Where did they come from? Nowhere. I said, who made them? He said, nobody. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Somehow not. He said, from this time, from this, a tiny dot appeared. The dot contained all the matter in the universe. The dot began to spin and then spun so fast that it exploded and created the known universe. I said, so you're telling me that you got a dot that just started spinning on its own. Now, now let me see. Where's my, where's my main man, Connor Stork? Come on up, Connor. We're going to do a little scientific experiment. Connor is a senior at, East, at Central, East Central High School. Central. And ladies, you want to Facebook him, Connor Stork, because he is available. <laughs> okay, Connor, I want you to put that on the floor there, and I want you to spin it. Oh. Good, good, good. That's good. Good, good. All right. Our first experiment, his hand spun the ball. Okay, now I want you to set it on the floor. And I don't want you to touch it, but I want you to spin it. Can't. Well, why don't you? What do you mean you can't? You just can't. It's what, impossible. What, wait a minute. Uh, why don't you tell it to spin? Spin ball. <laughs> Doesn't work. I don't think you're putting enough effort into it, man. Spin ball. <laughs> And it, it should have listened. It should have listened to that. Look, just get really loud with it, okay? All right. Get wait. All get right. it. Get pumped up first. All right. Get pumped up. Okay. All right, ready? Right. Ready? Spin ball. <laughs> Didn't work. Well, our scientific experiment was successful. The ball will not spin without somebody spinning it. Would you say that? All right. Let's give Connor a hand. Way to go. Y'all, that blows the whole evolution theory up right there. Energy does not appear by itself. Trust me, I've been trying to get energy to appear in that gas tank out there in the car for years. It just doesn't happen until you pull in the gas station and you pay for energy and you run your car. But they want us to believe the dot started spinning by itself. And it started spinning so fast that it got so hot that it exploded and created the known universe. Now, y'all, that takes a lot more religious faith than to believe in Jesus Christ. The birth and the death of the universe. This is a Prentice Hall General Science book. It says 18 to 20 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe was concentrated into a much smaller, a dot much smaller than a period at the end of this page. And then the Big Bang occurred. This explains the whole universe. Okay. Here's one I like. This is 1999 Earth Science. It says every 80 to 100 billion years a Big Bang occurs again. Now, they cut down a tree to print that book. Can you believe that? 80 to 100. Now, how do they know that one? It's hard enough to try to get people to believe there was a Big Bang. They want me to believe it happens every 80 to 100 billion years. Everything squeezes back together, turns into a ball again, spins, and then explodes. They got a new scientific theory out. It'll be in the textbooks before you know it. This guy's come up with the conclusion that, you know what? Time is actually spinning backwards on the outside of the universe. Miss Karen, what do you think about that? The whole time I'm in here talking like this, I'm actually... On the outside of the universe. So that explains it. There never really was a beginning. It's been just going backwards all the time. So, wow, you guys are going to be in high school forever. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. But that's what they want us to believe. This one's really good. Nothing really means nothing. 
Okay. Nothing really means nothing. Yeah, that means that even though you have nothing, you might really have something. No. You know, when I was a kid, they had a song. It was called Nothing from Nothing. Bring nothing. That's right. I mean, but look at that. From this state of nothingness, the universe began in a giant explosion. Wow, that's some real science there. This guy commented on it. He said, where did everything come from? This is Discover Magazine. The universe burst into something from absolutely nothing. What? Zero, nada. As it got bigger, it became filled with even more stuff that came from absolutely nowhere. What? You've got to have a doctor degree to write an article like this. How is that possible? Ask Dr. Alan Guth. His theory of inflation explains everything. Okay. How's the theory of inflation go? Well, it goes like this. The observable universe could have evolved from an infinitesimal region. That's a tiny little dot in normal language. It is then tempting to go one step further and speculate that the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. What? I wouldn't come to that conclusion. But that's intelligent scientists. You know, the Bible says professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Paul wrote that in Romans chapter 1, verse 22. In chapter 1, basically talks about evolution. They begin to look around them and become vain in their imagination. They begin to worship the creation rather than the Creator. And y'all, by the way, that's what evolution is really all about. People don't want to follow God, so they want to create a way that they can push God out of it. See, if you believe in God, God the superior was at the beginning, created us the inferior, and He's working us toward a higher state. But if you want to believe evolution, we are the superior higher state. We're, we're the gods. You can find out, basically, how this thing doesn't work with a simple little experiment. We got some Van Cleef Bulldogs in here, don't we? Some football players. You not play anymore, Mr. Eli? <laughs> Retired, huh? All right. Well, let's just say we got some really strong robot football players there, and we're going to use a little merry-go-round. Y'all, y'all, y'all have heard of merry-go-round before. None of y'all played on in these days, do you? Let's say we were to get three little fourth graders and put them on that merry-go-round. We're going to demonstrate again why evolution's Big Bang theory doesn't work. All right, we're going to put these little fourth graders on the merry-go-round and start them spinning. We're going to go into what's called phase one, and they're having a good time, and our football players are spinning them, and they're spinning them faster and all, and it's going great. And then we go into what we call phase two, which is when the merry-go-round reaches 30 miles an hour. And so the fourth graders are no longer just thinking, go faster, hurry up, you lazy bums. Now they're just holding on for dear life, praying that the ride will end. But it's not going to end because we're going to go into phase three of our experiment. That's when we get the merry-go-round up to 60 miles per hour, and they are really barely hanging on, and they're screaming, stop, stop, let me off of this. Well, just about that time, we're going to go into phase four, which is when we reach 100 miles per hour on our merry-go-round, and it begins spinning, and the fourth graders begin to fly off. Ah! Ah! We're going to notice an interesting phenomenon as these fourth graders are flying off. As they fly off, and before they hit a telephone pole or tree or something, we're going to notice as they fly off, ah! that they're going to be spinning in the exact same direction as the merry-go-round they came off of. And that's a simple scientific principle called the conservation of angular momentum, which simply means this. If an object is spinning and pieces fly off of it or if it disintegrates, every piece that flies off of it will be heading in the same direction. They'll be spinning in the same direction. Simple scientific fact. And so... If the Big Bang Theory is true, then every single planet and every single solar system and every single galaxy in the universe will be spinning in the same direction, if it's true. But there's a problem that's not so. For example, you get out to Venus, Uranus, and Pluto, and you notice some of them are spinning backwards from each other. These planets are spinning backwards. Psalm 19.1 tells us this. He says, The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament the expanse of heaven shows his handiwork. In other words, if you look out at the universe and you see something like that, you realize God did that on purpose just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. Because it is stupid. It doesn't work scientifically, plain and simple. Of the eight, eight of the 91 moons in our solar system rotate backwards. You've got Saturn and Neptune that have moons orbiting in both directions around the planets. Some galaxies spin backwards. 
Here's an article from CNN.com slash space. It says, Goofy Galaxy Spins in the Wrong Direction. That's really good. No, nope, you know what? It's not a goofy galaxy and it's not spinning in the wrong direction. It's spinning in the direction that God designed it to spin. Because God is the creator and again, it doesn't fit the Big Bang Theory because the Big Bang never happened. It's not even scientific. Romans 1.28, it says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. So in Romans chapter 1, we see that because people refuse to believe in God, they begin to believe in every crazy thing you can think of. They begin to believe this kind of crazy stuff like evolution. And the bad part is, we've got to pay so they can teach it to our kids. Adolf Hitler said it well. He said, if you tell a lie long enough, loud enough, and often enough, people really believe it. That's a simple principle of evolution. If you tell a lie loud enough, long enough, and often enough, people will believe it. I run into people all the time. They say, oh, well, that, that Big Bang is proven. It's a fact. You Christians just need to give up. I'm like, wait a minute. You've not proven anything yet. You've not shown us Christians anything yet. Here's another one. He says, people are more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. And that's basically what it is. You just keep telling people that stuff. You start them out when they're very young, telling them all this crazy stuff in their little childhood books or kindergarten books, and you tell them the whole rest of their life. Pretty simple. Same way you kill a rat, by the way. Rat poison is made up of 99.99% food and just 0.005% poison. See, that fellow that went to the University of New Orleans that was sitting in my class, he had been taught 99.995% science and just a little lie in there. So the lie changed his whole view of science and the Bible and caused him to think that he couldn't believe the Bible if he believed science. And that's how you kill a mouse. You just give him a little poison and that's how they mess up something. If, if you programmed your computer to believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5, it would crash. It wouldn't do anything else from then on, no matter what good equations you put in it. All you got to do is put one little wrong thing in there and it throws everything else off. So we're in a battle over truth with people. That's why one of the pieces of the armor of God is called the sword of what, Dylan? The sword of truth. That's right. The sword of truth. I got to keep them on their toes. My guys are learning the armor of God in their group class. Y'all learned that years ago here. Probably got time to spring it on them again. So we got all these great science in these books, but they have a little poison mixed in with them all in there. Here's a good example. Earth has changed much since its formation four and a half billion years ago. Has it? Since its formation four and a half billion years ago, the earth has changed. Changes continuously. Life too on earth has evolved. Well, that's a tricky word. There are several meanings for the word evolved. For example, we have cosmic evolution. That's the origin of time, space, and matter. That's the Big Bang. Then we have chemical evolution. That's the origin of the elements, hydrogen and stuff like that. But you know what? You can't evolve any compound beyond hydrogen. You can't get past iron in evolving compounds. But yet they want us to believe all these compounds evolved over millions of years. Then we have stellar and planetary evolution. Nobody's ever seen a star form. They think they see stars being born out there, but there's no solid proof that they've ever seen a star born out there. And that's what he says. Martin Harwood says it. He says, The silent embarrassment of modern astrophysics is that we don't know how even a single one of these stars managed to form. Really, but yet you've got this big theory of where they all came from. We see them blow up all the time. About every 30 years, the star's blowing up. We see them getting less and less, but we don't see any actually forming. And there's a lot of stars out there. You know, there's so many stars out there in the universe that every human on Earth could own 11 trillion of them. That's a lot of stars. That's a lot of stars. You could own 11 trillion stars. You know one of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah chapter 9? Where Isaiah says the kingdom of Jesus Christ will expand outwardly forever. You ever think about that? When Jesus comes back and starts His kingdom, it will expand outwardly forever. He'll only be on this planet just so long and then we'll be out in space. We'll be going forever and learning. We'll never run out of things to explore and discover in the universe. That universe is created out there for us to enjoy, y'all. You know, people, people are like, what are we going to do in heaven? Are we going to be bored? I'm like, man, you need to read the Bible. We're not going to sit around on clouds and strum harps. We're going to be doing things. We're going to be enjoying, we're going to be discovering. There's going to be so much more to see. 
The kingdom of Jesus Christ will go out forever and ever. Of the increase of His government, there will never be an end. Never. Forever. And then we have organic evolution. That's the origin of life. And then we have macroevolution. That's the changing of one kind into another. None of those are scientifically proven. None of them. A friend of mine was debating at Kansas City University with some professors. And one of them said, Do you realize there are thousands of varieties of dogs in the world? He said, Yeah. He said, you expect me to believe that thousands of varieties of dogs came from just two dogs that got off Noah's Ark? He said, I believe that. He said, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. He said, no, the stupidest thing you ever heard was thousands of varieties of dogs came from a rock. That's the stupidest thing you ever heard. Yeah, you can, you can breed dogs and they turn into different kind of dogs, but they're always dogs. They never turn into something else. They're always dogs. You can, you can get a big dog, you can get a little dog, you can breed them, you can have all kinds of dogs, but you know what? You're always going to have dogs no matter what you do. In fact, let's take a simple, simple test. Oh, who are we going to victimize? Marley, come on up. Let's give her a hand. Yes. How you doing, lady? You're going to win this one-question game show here. We've got a dog, we've got a wolf, we've got a coyote, and we've got a banana. Now, most scientists cannot win this game show, but I'll bet you will. Okay. Which one of these is not like the others? The banana. The banana! Y'all give her a hand! Yay! <laughs> yes, easily through adaptation process, a dog could have moved out into that chain of wolf and coyote and dog but never into a banana. But if you believe evolution, then all four of those have a common ancestor. It's just not happening. It's not happening. Plain and simple. The Bible says the fruit yielding fruit after its kind, living creatures after its kind. Adam and Eve had black kids, white kids, red kids, all kinds of color kids, but you know what? They were still kids. They never had an alligator. And you won't either. So you can have kinds can spread out. But you never have a different species. And that's what they want us to believe. The, spe the, the origin of the species. All these things evolve from lower life forms, primordial ooze. We also have what's called microevolution, and that's variations within the same kinds. That's true. We've got black people, we've got white people. The variation code in DNA is about 0.28. It's the same variation between two white people. We have all kinds of variations between people in the way they look but they're still people. They don't change into alligators. This is a teacher's book. It says stress that the earth is thought to be at least four and a half billion years old. Why do you have to stress that? Why do you have to push people to believe that? Why couldn't you just teach them creation and teach them science and let them make their own choice? Well, it's simple because if you believe there's a creator, then we've got to find out what he wants. And for some reason, the system of the world does not want that. Doesn't want it at all. Science is systemized knowledge. It's not the same as evolution. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if we believe that, that puts a whole different perspective to everything, whether it's science or anything to do with life. That gives us a whole different perspective on how we live and what we do. But as Christians, believe it or not, we do believe in the Big Bang. So if your, if your teacher asks you tomorrow, do you believe in the Big Bang? Say, Yes, I do, teacher. And i got to tell you, you need to get ready for it because it's coming. There will be a big bang one day. Look what Peter says, 2 Peter 3.10. He says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens and the earth shall pass away with a great noise. The heavens and the earth are just going to blow up with a big... <laughs> so it's going to happen. There's going to be a big explosion. And a fervent heat, and the earth and all the works that are in them will be burned up. So you can tell her, yes, there will be a big bang, and you'd better turn or you're going to burn. You better fly or you're going to fry. You better get right or you're going to get left. All right, all right. Do we have time? we got time for questions. I can't believe this. By the way, if you have questions, jot my uh, website down here. Look us up on Facebook. 
and uh, Martin at martinbritt.com or just look up martinbritt.com, like us on Facebook. Send me a message and we will get you one of these DVDs you can give out to your friends. But let's take some questions since we have a few minutes. Yes. What's that? How long have I been preaching? Uh, twenty years. Yep, twenty years. Worked for twenty years for Dale Chance Grocery Stores. God called me to preach. Surrendered to the ministry. A year later, I went into the ministry. Then Dale Chance went out of business, so they couldn't handle it without me. Yes. Isn't evolution just made of temptation? Isn't evolution just made of temptation? What makes you say that? Well, thinking people are intelligent, don't you think the devil tempted them to think of evolution and how the world came to be? Very observant. Y'all hear what he said? He had a theory, and I think it's a fact, that evolution is just basically temptation. That the devil tempted man, say it again. Mankind to think that the world came from something else. Tempted mankind to think that the world came from something else. Yes. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever talked to someone and changed their mind? Quite often. In fact, this is the best way to win people to Jesus Christ. For the simple reason that, well, for example, a friend of mine asked me, she, she does a, um, a, 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 a juvenile delinquent center in Baton Rouge, and she said, I want you to come up and talk to the kids in our juvenile center. And I said, I'll be glad to. I'll talk to them about evolution. She said, well, the only thing is you can't talk about God here. I said, well, here's the thing. I don't have to talk about God. If I can prove that the world didn't create itself, that only leaves one conclusion. There has to be a creator. So if you get somebody to understand that, that this, there's no accident, there has to be a creator, well, then they're going to start looking for God and they're always going to find Him. So yes, this is actually one of the best ways to win people to the Lord. Good question. Yeah, man. Okay, so if I have some friends, not like a giant amount, but an amount of friends who very good for you in this and the evolution and stuff how would I I've tried to be like, tell them about Jesus and they're like oh watch this on YouTube and this is exactly what it said it said blah 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 this chemicals mixed together and then the big bang and if we rewind it all started from nothing we have no clue what happened before then I was like that makes no sense but they wouldn't I don't know how to approach it to be able to get in their brain that it's not right very good question what's your name suggest Alex Strong Alex, as you walk as a Christian, there's something we call divine appointments. And basically, God has engineered them all through your day. If you keep an eye out for them, you'll spot them. But basically, as you walk with people, something strange happens to them. If you're born again, you're saved, right? So the same power that, that, rose, that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The Bible says, you will receive power and be my witnesses. The word for power there in the Greek is the Greek word dunamis. That's where we get our word dynamite from. Dynamite! So basically, if you will study your Bible and you will walk in the Spirit and you will concentrate on God in your mind, let me tell you something strange is going to happen to you. John 7, 38 says, He who believes in me out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So what's going to happen is you're going to be around people and they're going to ask you a question. And you're going to try to answer them, and they're going to make a fool out of you. They're going to act like they know so much more. Don't worry about it, because while they were asking you, their soul was open, and what God did without you even seeing is He planted a seed in them. And that seed will begin to work to try to save their soul, to try to save their life. So what's going to happen is, through this process of walking with your friends, you don't really have to prove anything. Because what's going to happen is, God's going to let them get to the moment of crisis, where their life is crazy or they're thinking about killing themselves or killing somebody else or mad or angry or frustrated or depressed or family problems, you know what they're going to do? They're going to come straight to you because they felt something when they were around you that was supernatural and they want to know what you've got that they don't have. In fact, the more people pick at you, the more you, re you realize they're trying to figure out if what you've got is real. Because most of the people that you run into have never seen a real Christian before. 
Not to say they haven't had Christians around them, but they've never seen the light that's supposed to radiate out of you. So believe it or not, you don't actually have to worry about that. But like 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study up to show you're approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed. That means when they ask you that question, you may not know. So you go home, or, or you can do like some people do. They'll get on their cell phone and start texting me, hey Martin, what's the answer to this? You know, and then I answer and they come back out, well as a matter of fact, you know, like they're the expert. So I'll give you my cell phone later, and, and you just you know, give me the text, and then you'll come out looking like, man, you are the guru. So, but otherwise, you don't have to worry about it, because if you, if you love people, love is of God, real love, and when people sense that love, they want more of it. And they will keep coming back to you and coming back to you, and if you're patient, it may take six months, it may take a year, but they will be saved. And then when one of them gets saved, you know what? It's two of you. And before you know it, what grade are you in? Tenth. Tenth? See, that's perfect. You got tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Within three years, you can see all of them saved if you keep studying and preparing and training yourself and sharing with them. You can see all of them saved. You got to realize most people have no reason to want to become a Christian because they've never seen real Christianity. They've never seen people that were just sold out to God. That's that's how people get one. You see a lot of these young people there? You know, what, you know why a lot of our young people are here? It's because of that lady right there. She re rededicated her life to the Lord. And young people started figuring out, you know what? She loves us and doesn't want anything from us. When people, you know, a lot of people you deal with in school, you know what the problem is? You know they only, they only want to hang with you because, you know what, you're cool or you got it going on. Or, you know, the, the Davis guy, man, he's so handsome. And I, I want to be associated with him, you know. But you know what? When people figure out that you want to hang with them just because you want to... Did anybody ever see that movie, Save a Life? Y'all need to see that. Get, probably get the clean version of it. Because there's one that's a little rough. But you know, that movie says it all. When you get to where you want, you want, to, you want to love somebody so much that you, you're not willing to let them cut themselves and do all of that, you want them to know what you got in your heart. It's life-changing. All right, we got time for a couple more. Yes, sir. What if they like keep like pushing you away as you try to uh, share with them? That they just won't listen to you, they just push you away. That is frustrating. And most of them will. Think about this. They may not be possessed by Satan, like a demon living in them, you know, and every time you what's your name? Trey. Trey. You know, every time you talk to them like, Good morning, Trey, how you doing? You know. <laughs> it's probably not like that. They're not demon possessed, but you know what? The devil, a lot of times, when someone has, you know, bad family situations or esteem issues or anger issues or drug issues or whatever, he gets a claw into somebody's head. You can't see it, but it's like there. And he, like, just squeezes that pain there. And, and it's, it's, it's demonic. The Bible says we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That means over Van Cleve, there's a principality of Van Cleve. There's a demon up there, a prince, who's over the principality of Van Cleve. And he has little imps. And they're forever just sending these programs down to people's minds that they control. So this claw is there. That's your real enemy. It's not that person. So you're trying to love on them. And, and they're just sending that information down that claw. So, so you're trying to be smarter than somebody 6,000 years old. Man, that's a battle, isn't it? But you know what? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. As you will begin to pray, you'll see that opposition sometimes get harder and the objections get stronger. But just like I was telling him, the moment of crisis, the divine appointment, you'll see it. If you'll pray for it, you'll just say, Lord, I don't want to see him go to hell. And he's totally opposed, so you're going to have to open up a chance for me to share with him so that he'll accept it. See, it's just like that, you know what, you, 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 didn't, earn, you didn't go in the store and buy that, did you? You had to work for it. Well, you know what? Soul winning is the same way. It's just like all the pain you had to go through to get that jacket. You went through a lot of pain to get that jacket. Went through a lot of opposition. People, people didn't want you to move up even. But you, you knew what you wanted. And you pushed toward it. Well, soul winning is the same way. When you look at that person the same way you looked at excelling at sports, you're a warrior for Christ. And that's what we have to realize. We have the answer. You have what they want. They just don't know it yet. But you're going to find that people will put up a smoke screen because they don't really want you to know you're getting through. Kind of like when I was a kid. I used to love Star Trek. 
and the captain of the Enterprise got caught by a bunch of aliens one day and they had him in this big glass prison cage and they wouldn't let him out. And so he pulled, he, pulled out his, he, he pulled out his phaser and he pointed it at the wall and he pulled the trigger and nothing happened. And the alien says, ah, it doesn't work in here. And he said, really? He pointed at him and the alien went, ah! <laughs> see, he was creating an illusion. He didn't want him to see that he really had broke through. He had already blown the wall down. And a lot of times you don't realize how much progress you've already made. You don't realize it. But I'm telling you, if you put your mind to it, you're liable to look around this time next year and they'll be sitting right... You have to add another chair there on the other side of Marley because he'll be sitting right next to you. You'll be going... But that's what it is. You've got to want it. You've got to want to reach people. It's not something you can just do casually. All right, one more. Oh, we're done. Brother Terry? All right, guys. Don't give more of a hand.